make it fair and everybody uh, on entry requirements, what we do is they all do the same assessment. So we don't look at your educational background. We test it during the assessment, okay? So there's three components to the assessment. The first part is a computer-based test or CBT. It's called Compass and you can look it up. And it'll test things like hand-eye coordination, multitasking, memory, verbal reasoning. And there's a little bit of mathematics and physics in there. Very, very simple stuff wouldn't even be close to GCSE level, okay? It's not, it's, it's very basic Newton's laws, areas of circles and spheres and volumes of a cylinder, those type of basic things, okay? The next bit, then, or that takes about two and a half hours and it just pumps out a set of statistics that we then review. The second part is a simulator check, okay? Um, that takes about 20 minutes. We're not expecting you to be able to fly the airplane or, or the simulator if you haven't flown before. We're not looking for Maverick out of Top Gun, okay? Um, what we're looking for are three main components. The first one we call trainability. What does that mean? Well, very simply, it means if I instruct you or I demonstrate or teach you something, we wanna see how quickly you get it, okay? So uh, we're looking to see, do we have to repeat ourselves over and over? Do you have to practice many times before you get it? Or do you get it after a couple of minutes? The next thing we look for is what we call capacity. And capacity is very simple in that once I teach you one thing, I'm looking to see how quickly I can teach you something else, okay? And that you can absorb that information and then apply it. And when you take those two components together, you can see it gives us an idea of how long it would take to train you and how well you would do during a training course. The other thing that we look for in the simulator is your interaction with an instructor, okay? And after, quite often in the interview, we'll actually test and see how much stuff do you actually remember from this thing, or was it just rob rabbit and headlamps? Is it all going too fast for me? Okay, it's a blur. Or can you actually say, yeah, I remember this instrument, or I remember the instructor told me this, or whatever. So you were taking information in, okay? Um, then the last part is an interview. The interview lasts between about 30 to 40 minutes. It's, a, it's an airline interview. It's like going for a job at an airline. Um, what you really have to do is you've got to sell that this is something that you really want to do, okay? And whatever it takes for you to prove that, you need to get it across to those interviewing you. So it's normally a panel of two people. It's someone from HR and it's either a senior flight examiner or a flight instructor, okay? The interview starts off nice and easy to get to know you, get to know your background, but then we move on and we want to see, okay, you know, you want to become a pilot, so what have you done about it? Okay, and it's not just good enough to come in and say, you know, uh, I went on my holidays and won. It's great. Yeah, no, you're in. No, no, we need more. We need to see that passion. We need to see motivation. We need to see evidence that this is something that you really want to do. And you can prove it in any, in any way you want. And that could be anything from you flight sim at home or um, you go out to the, the, the side of the air, the runway, and you take registrations of aircraft, you know, and you're on a rack with your binoculars, if that's really what you do. Any of those types of things, you watch black box investigation on TV. That's fine, that shows an interest. Then we need to look at, there are two other key areas that we, we need to test. Um, flight training is split into two components. We have the technical skills and the non-technical skills. Non-technical skills are looking at your your ability to deal with people under, under pressurized circumstances. So how do we test that? Well, very simply, we give you some awkward questions and we see, okay, so how would you deal with this? Okay, and why did you deal with it that way? And what if it goes wrong, what would you do next? And if it still goes wrong, what would you do next? And what would you do and what wouldn't you do? And why wouldn't you have done it this way? And why would you have done it that way? And has this ever happened to you in real life? Or have you ever had a personality clash with someone? Or did you never get on with someone? Or blah, blah, blah. And we just keep asking those types of questions just to see how you would deal with any of those situations, okay? And then we will look for evidence that, you know, you have been in those. And things like, you know, playing sports and being on a team or team captain or part-time jobs or anything. All those types of things will go towards the evidence of that. Then what we look for is we look for technical skills. And the technical skills we'll look at, well, number one is your ability to fly an airplane, but that's coordination, we've already tested that. The other technical skills is just knowledge about aircraft and systems on aircraft. So the way we do that is we'll just ask you some general knowledge questions about airplanes. 
What's your favorite airplane? Why is it your favorite airplane? What's different between this airplane and that airplane? Can you tell me the parts of an airplane? Can you tell me how this works? That works. Feel it. We just want to get a baseline of your general knowledge on aviation and aircraft. Okay? We then round up the interview with some uh, mental maths questions, which everybody hates. Okay? Without pen and paper, without calculators or now phones or even watches nowadays. Okay? You got to do it in your head. And it's normally time distance and uh, time distance speed calculations, those types of things. So we'll ask you a few of those or direction finding, just to see where your mental maths is. And that finishes up the assessment. Okay. You will then what we then do is we look at all three of those components. We look at it as a big overview, and all we're looking for is we're trying to figure out if you started the training course the following day, how would you do? Okay. And as you're going through the training course. Are you going to get the types of scores in ground exams and flight tests and things that are going to look good on a CV when you put your application into an airline? Are they going to accept it? And that's what we're trying to see the potential of during this assessment. So I normally do the briefings for any of these assessments for anybody coming in. And I, I try, it's very difficult not to be nervous coming in to do these things, and that's, that's fine. But we will check everything more than once. But all I say to the person sitting in front of me is, Try your best. Give me your best so as that I can get an accurate measurement of you and see what your abilities are like so that you get a decent shot at trying to get in and get, get commercial training. Okay? So that's what the, the training program in, or the, the aptitude test involves. Then we look at okay, you're through the aptitude test, you've got a class one medical, you've had a bit of time in a, a light aircraft, maybe an hour, so what way are you going to do the training? So as I said before, there's two, two routes to go. The first one is the integrated or full-time. And you can see there, it's a full-time training course. It's 16 months long. You'll come out with just over something like 220 hours of flight training, including simulator, okay? The advantage of this is it's the fastest way to do your training from having no flight training whatsoever to become, come out with a commercial license, being able to go to an airline or as we say going from zero to hero okay in 16 months in fact you'll do it you should do it faster 14 and a half to 15 months okay now because it's it, it, it's the minimum <coughs> number of hours that you can do it in it's the shortest time you can do it in also normally the cost is kept to a minimum as well okay that's the the, the advantages of course with everything there's a disadvantage okay what's the disadvantage you're trying to basically squeeze Four years of college into less than half the time okay so it's intensive really intensive uh, the flight school we only close one day and that's Christmas Day and the rest of the time we're open we operate from 5 in the morning to 1 o'clock in the morning okay so you start training on a pilot's roster so and you'll have 14 hour days of study if not longer okay to get this done so you really have to be dedicated to um, none of the content of the training is difficult. None of it is going to be above GCSE or leaving cert, or not even leaving cert, sorry, junior cert if you're from the south. So GCSE or, or junior cert is the level. That's not the problem. It's the volume of information. Because if you think about it, um, if you're sitting up the front of one of these big shiny airplanes, there's only two people up the front and now the third person's gone. That used to be the flight engineer. He used to know all about the engine air conditioning the pilots just looked cool in the uniform and tried to fly the airplane um, not anymore that person's gone so the flight engineer is now the pilot so that means you need to know every system on the aircraft so that's air conditioning pressurization all the flight computers electronics electrics hydraulics pneumatics everything so you've got to cover all of that in that time okay so it's intensive all right there is another way to do it, which is called a modular route or part-time route, and it's more of a building block. You attach bits on. So you start off with a private pilot's license, you build up a bit of experience, you then add something like a night rating, you build up a bit more experience, and then you go up to a commercial, which means you're involving sort of the economics of flying as a pilot, and safety, and all these other types of things, and then you get an instrument rating, and so on and so on. So you, you it's a block, building block approach, okay? 
So what's the advantage of doing it that way? Very simply, um, you do it at your own pace, okay? So yeah. we're not trying to squeeze you into 16 months anymore, you do it at the pace that you learn at. So you can take two years to do it, you can take three years to do it, you can take four years to do it, whatever, okay? Um, what, why people would choose this, um, maybe over, even if they're accepted onto an integrated <coughs> program, why would they choose to go this? Or maybe if you're currently working, you're still trying to get the funds together to complete the training, maybe your family circumstances that you can't commit to full-time training, or there could be other reasons, okay? Um, sometimes, unfortunately, you know, if you can't get, it's not, it's not cheap by any means, and you can't get the finance together, but it can be an easier route because you can spread the, the cost over a larger, longer number of years, you know, four or five years, it can sometimes be easier. Um, what's the disadvantage? Well, if it takes you longer, it's gonna cost more. And legally, actually, you have to do at least 50 to 60 more hours of flight training. And if you take 60 hours, 50 to 60 hours of 200 euros an hour, you're talking at least 10 grand more, okay? But sometimes it may be easier, even though it costs more, it's easier to do it over a longer period of time. Well, what I will say is, it doesn't matter which of the two routes you go down, whether it's integrated or modular, the license that you get at the end is identical. The airlines can will not know the difference, okay? So you walk into an airline with having done either route with your commercial license, they don't know. However, they will ask, okay? So they'll say, what way did you do the training? And you can either say integrated, and their next question is gonna be, so how long did it take? Okay, and they're expecting you to come back and say 16 to 18 months. If you said, oh, it took me three years, then I go, oh, oh question mark here, okay? So, or they may say, say, oh, I did a modular, and they said, okay, how long did it take it? Three or four years, but I was paying, I was working at the same time as I was paying for this, you know, myself or whatever, and they'll say, fine, that's okay. And then they'll look at things like your scores and, and your grind exams and your flight tests and things like that, so they'll take all of those things into consideration. But it's, it's, it does, no airline anymore really cares which of the two routes you did, as long as for whatever route you went, did it in a reasonable period of time and you got the, you met the standards required on either and they'll have a look at you okay right if I can do a quick sales on our, our hard sell on why to choose after okay I'm sure you've and I hope you have researched many other flight schools there's uh, a lot of them around okay in, particularly in Europe but what are the benefits of training with us in, in after well number one we do all the training in one location, okay? We're based in Cork, you will operate most of the time out of Cork or one of our other satellite bases on the south coast of Ireland. We don't send you like other flight schools who out to Arizona or down to New Zealand or to Spain or anywhere else like that, okay? You do it all under in one location and that means we have really good oversight on you and make sure your standards are really high. We would do what we call real weather training Dan mentioned it, you know, we don't go off to Arizona or Spain and do this thing where, you know, you fly in blue skies, I know we don't see it much up here, but there, there is blue up there every now and again, um, where you fly up there and there's the odd time you get these big white fluffy things they see and they're, they're sort of not sure whether they can fly through them or not, you know, it's a cloud, you know, <laughs> yeah, you can actually go through it. We don't get that here and most of Europe doesn't get that. So why would you learn to fly an aircraft in blue skies and calm winds if that's not what you're going to do for the rest of your career? You learn to fly in the weather you're going to operate in. So in Cork, we get all four seasons in a day. So you'll experience most of it, you know, the rain coming sideways and all that type of stuff. So what it means is by the time you re reach the end of your training, uh, general handling of aircraft in difficult weather conditions is not going to be a problem. It will be second nature to you. Um, other things, um, we all operate the ground and flight training as a truly integrated